out. Take a child, alter their quality of breathing and sleeping. And the real big issue now is how will they be during the day? So now you take a child who's five, six, seven, eight, it doesn't matter. Their issue has begun years ago. So it's not like you had one or two bad nights of sleep. You've had a poor quality of sleeping and breathing for years. And the parents have been struggling with so many different issues, and not the least of which is the ADD, ADHD discussion. Because the child who doesn't get a proper night's sleep with a good quality of breathing throughout the entire night is gonna wake up and be unrested. And when you get a child who's had a poor quality night's sleep, poor breathing all night long, and you make that happen for years, you know what you've got? A six, seven, or eight year old that's gonna go to school and have trouble learning, have trouble sitting still, have trouble behaving, have trouble cooperating, basically have trouble fitting in to what is supposed to be a quiet and peaceful and learning environment, and it's not long after that where the phone call comes to the parent. And when the phone call comes to the parent from the school, what happens is we have little Jimmy here and he's a little bit disruptive and we really want you to have him evaluated for ADD and ADHD. They're going to be diagnosed with ADD and ADHD. And our solutions are pharmaceutical. If we are given a pharmaceutical, it's usually in the form of some sort of a stimulant. And what that does to the child is it kind of pushes them over the edge and it brings them back to calm. So you basically take an excited or hyperactive child, you stimulate them more, and you bring them back to so-called calm. But it doesn't make a better learning child. You're not gonna have a child who's able to learn as well. So now you might have the child sitting still in class because they might be a little more numb or relaxed or calm, but it doesn't necessarily make them a better learner. If we have the so-called ADD, ADHD diagnosis, we're talking about hyperactivity. We're talking about all of the things about behavior and development that land in this category. And the interesting thing about research is, and there is current, ongoing, and past research that shows, children who are sleep deprived produce the same exact symptoms as kids who are diagnosed with ADD and ADHD. In fact, there's a nice study that showed children who were diagnosed with ADD and ADHD were mixed with children who were sleep deprived. And in that group of kids, when they tried to analyze them and look at their symptoms and diagnose them, they couldn't tell them apart. And if you have a group of kids and you can't tell apart who's an ADD child and who's a sleep deprived child, it's no surprise that maybe the ADD and ADHD has a cause. And maybe that cause has to do with the quality of the breathing and the sleeping overnight. And there's a lot of research out there. And one of the, one of the pioneers here is a Dr. Stephen Sheldon out of Lori Children's Hospital in Chicago. And he does a wonderful job of researching. And over the decades, he's come to a conclusion. And I've, I've seen him speak. And it's not soon after he jumps on stage and he makes a statement that ADHD and ADD do not exist. They are an outcome of a sleep disorder breathing. They're an outcome of a poor quality of sleep. It's all about the quality of sleep. Another researcher who's produced beautiful research on the same topic is Dr. Karen Bonnick out of Einstein at Yeshiva University. Dr. Karen Bonnick has the largest study to date. 11,000 children were watched over seven years. And they were divided into two groups, sleep disorder breathing children and children who do not have sleep disorder breathing issues. The children in the sleep disorder breathing group, over their seven years, her study showed that they were 50% more likely to be diagnosed with an ADD or ADHD diagnosis and treated with medication. 50% is a coin toss for our child to be diagnosed and treated with a medication. Also in her group, they were doing testing. They were doing IQ or intelligence testing along those seven years. And the children with the sleep disorder breathing, their, their intelligence testing, their IQ scores were dropping over those seven years. And that's really not the way it works when you're growing and forming. The formative growing years for a child when they're sleeping and breathing well, your IQ raises to a certain point and then you kind of plateau. We don't see IQs diminishing amongst children.